shall we rise up? Yes. Where do you stand today? I've been talking to you about repentance. I've been telling you after the message, pray. Call upon the name of the Lord. Because you do not know what will happen tomorrow. And tomorrow may be too late for you. Open your heart to the Lord and pray. And call upon the name of the Lord that you will not die a sinner. There's any bad thing in your hand, drop it and call upon the name of the Lord. Don't play with your salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. What will it profit you if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul? In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for bringing us together tonight. We're praying that you will speak your word to our hearts again. And we're praying, O oh Lord, that as you speak, we'll be attentive, we'll be responsive, and we'll go where you want us to go. We'll do what you want us to do. We'll pray the way you want us to pray, that your name will be glorified in our lives in Jesus' name. We pray, O oh Lord, that you open our spiritual eyes, that we do not allow your word to fall to the ground in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Today, I'm talking on the condition for revival in Psalm 42. Psalm 42. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God. For the living God, when shall I come and appear before God? Here again we see the psalmist panting after God, seeking for God, looking for God. He was so thirsty, he was so hungry, he was so desirous that he said, As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. He uses the picture of an animal. That has been roaming about in the forest and had jumped on trees and run about in very many places in the forest looking for water, but there was no water. He had run a great distance without water. He had eaten a lot without water. He had been exposed to the heat of the forest, tropical forest, without water. And he had been searching for long to get water. And eventually no, nothing is more important to this animal than water. And he got sight of water. And this heart, the animal, panted after the water brooks, running after the water brooks. And the psalmist said, even in the same way, I've been in a parched land where there was no refreshing. I've been in a parched land where there was no presence of God. I have been in a parched land where I have been so thirsty, so thirsty to see God, so thirsty to see the face of God, so thirsty to have the presence of God, and yet I have not seen God for a long time. I have been looking for victory over sin. I have been looking for the presence of God. I have been looking for victory over sin. I have been looking for victory over temptation. As they had panted after the water brooks, so my soul panted after thee, O God. And he was asking the question, O oh God, where are you? Nothing was important to the psalmist at this time. That's what we call revival. That's the heart reaching after God, wanting to see God, wanting to receive from God, wanting to be refreshed by God. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? As he was seeking for God, there was a barrier between him and God. He went this way, he couldn't see God. He went the other way, he couldn't see God. He said, when will it be? Oh, when will it be? When my heart will experience God again. When will it be? Oh, when will it be? When my thirsty soul will be refreshed with the water of life from above. He said, when will it be? Oh, when will it be? When my heart that has been far away from God, that is drying up, because heaven has not opened up upon his soul. When will it be? Oh, when will it be? When he will discover the water of life and he will drink. And the partition between him and God will be taken away. And he will appear before the almighty God. 
It's just like when Job was seeking after God, thirsting after God, and looking for God, and it appeared that God was hiding himself. Oh yes, there are times that God hides himself. When the people of God relishes or delights in the healing more than the healer, he hides himself. When the people of God will enjoy the miracle more than the miracle worker, God will hide himself. When the people of God are seeking after the things of the world and their hearts are not panting after heaven, God will hide himself. When the people of God are looking for what they can see, what they can taste, what they can touch, and the God of heaven, the creator, is not important to them. God will hide himself. When the people of God are happier with their husband more than with God, they are happier with their wives more than with God, they are happier with having children more than having the almighty God in their lives, God will hide himself. When the people of God are no more reading the Bible, when the people of God are no more praying, when the people of God wake up early in the morning, they cannot even say good morning to God. They cannot even pray to God. They cannot even seek the face of God. When they wake up in the morning, the place they go immediately is a place of work. They don't care whether God is there or not until they get to trouble. God will hide himself. When the people of God are running after making money and the things of the world, and it doesn't matter to them whether God is happy or not, God will hide himself. It's only upon the time, until the time when the people of God will say, My heart is now panting after God. I now want to see God. I now want to love God. And they're saying, where is God? Where is God? And they're seeking after God. They're thirsting after God. It's only then that God will reveal himself. There is a condition for revival. And until that condition is fulfilled, the Lord will still be hiding himself. Look at Job chapter 23. Job chapter 23, verses 8 and 9. Behold, I go forward, but he's not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he does work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself. On the right hand, that I cannot see him. Do you know there is a time when God hides himself? We read from the story or from the history of the children of Israel, that the Lord brought them to the land of Canaan. A time came in the lives of the children of Israel, when they didn't remember the Lord that blessed them, the Lord that opened up the Red Sea, the Lord that gave them manna from heaven, the Lord that opened up River Jordan before them. The time came in the lives of the children of Israel. They never remembered again the God that made Jericho walls to fall down. A time came in their lives. They didn't remember again the Lord that, de that defeated all the enemy kings for them. They turned away from the Lord. They turned away from the Lord. And he sent the Amalekites against them. And he sent the Moabites against them. And he sent the Midianites against them. And he sent the Philistines against them. And then he just looked away from them. The Assyrians too, they were oppressing them. He just turned his face away from them. And at that time now they were looking for God. They couldn't find God. They even went to take uh, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from uh, Shiloh, where it was. And when the Ark of the Covenant of God came into their midst, they shouted, but God was not there. They prayed, but God was not there. They saw the Lord, but God is not there. God, where are you? They were thinking, behold, I go forward, but it's not there. And many, many people are like that today. They read the Bible, they can't find God. They pray, they cannot find God. They try to come to church, they cannot find God. They try to overcome sin, they cannot find the power of God. I go forward, but he's not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he does work, where we know he has been working before, where we know surely we'll find him there, but he's not there. I cannot behold him. He hideth himself. He hideth himself. Do you know God sometimes hides himself? And then you cry, and it appears you can't see him. And you call upon him, but he doesn't answer. And you run after him, but you never meet him. And you are reaching out, and you fast, and you pray, but he, he doesn't open up. He doesn't show himself. He said, he hideth himself on the right hand, and that I cannot see him. Why does God sometimes do that? That he hides himself from the people. We're told in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2. But... 
your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Many times, when people who are coming to church, when they have a little trouble, they do not know that their trouble is because of their sin. They will be looking at their backyard, they think there is a witch there. They will be looking at everything that goes on the window, whether a dog is barking at the window, or a bird is flying over the window, or a cat is uh, going over the window. They say, there it is, that's the cause of my trouble. The cause of my trouble is that there is a witch around here. Your iniquities are separated between you and your God. Witches and wizards don't trouble the people that are living above sin. In Egypt, all the magicians of Egypt were there. It was not a problem to Israel when Israel was following after the Lord. All those Egyptians, all those people of the world, they were there. It was never a problem unto the children of Israel when they were living right. In the wilderness, all the serpents were there. All the scorpions were there. All the wild animals were there. It was never a problem to the children of Israel. The problem is not the witch. The problem is not the wizard. The problem is not the familiar spirit. The problem is not the juju worshippers. The problem is not what the poison or the cause anybody is trying to put upon you. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. When some people pray and there is no answer. When some people get married and there is no child. When some people try to get work and there is no work. When some people walk and there is no prosperity, they think their in-laws are after them. They think their in-laws are the people that are causing problems. My friend, that doesn't matter. The Assyrians, they were always there. But then God protected the children of Israel when they were living right. When they were living right, God said, I will put your fear in their heart. But when they were not living right, then the scorpions and the serpents and the magicians and all the sorcerers came out to oppress them. Nebuchadnezzar had always been there. Babylon had always been there. But Nebuchadnezzar never thought of going to the children of Israel to get them into captivity. Only when they sinned. Only when they got away from the Lord. It was their sin that got them into trouble. If you ever get into captivity, it's because of your sin. If you ever get into any oppression, it's because of your sin. If you ever get into any trouble, it's because of your sin. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hidden a space from you that he will not hear. Do you know there are times God hides a space? When he's been warning you, but you never yield. When he's been talking to you, but you never respond. When it's been calling upon you, but you never answered, and you have been going into sin, into more and more sins, then a time will come when God will hide a space from the people. Your sins have hid a space from you that you will not hear. You might think because uh, people around you do not know about your sin. You may think, therefore, God does not know, but He knows. He says, am I a God far away? Am I not a God that is near? Does he see not as near as your heart? Does he not know your heart? Does he not know your thoughts? Does he not know your words? Does he not know what you do behind closed doors? Does he not know your hypocrisy? Does he not know your pretense? Doesn't he know your down sitting and your uprising? Doesn't he know your coming out and your coming in? Doesn't he know every impediment in your heart? He knows, he knows, and there is nothing that will cover it up. He knows your life and there is nothing that will bring him to be near. It says, but your iniquities, but your iniquities are separated between you and your God. It is your sin, it is your iniquity that has brought a barrier between you and God. You hear that uh, some people, uh, you know, they say they are Christians and they get married and they have miscarriage over miscarriage over miscarriage. Is it because the witches are so powerful? Is it because the idol worshippers are greater than God? You and work mightily. But your iniquities are separated between you and God. You pray for two years, three years, five years. There is no answer. What's the matter? Your iniquities are separated between you and your God. You try, you go this way, you can't find God. You fast, you can't find God. You call prayer partners, you can't find God. You call other people to assist you in prayer, you cannot find God. Is it so difficult to pray? Is it so difficult to get answers from God? Is heaven so bankrupt? Is heaven so poor? That you call yourself a child of God and you cannot receive answer from God? 
But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you that you will not hear. Before you can have revival, before the presence of God can come upon your life, before the power of God can come upon your life, every impediment to the flow of God's grace and God's power and God's presence must be removed. When I say every impediment, I mean every sin. I mean every iniquity. I mean everything that is contrary to the holiness of God. You see, before you, before you see the face of God, before the Lord begins to talk to you, you think you are all right. You think there is no sin. You think I'm a child of God. You think I do not have any iniquity. I do not have anything in my hand. You think I am, my life is so plain. That was what Isaiah thought. Isaiah himself, he thought he was a great prophet. He was a good prophet. He was a good follower of God. He was even calling on the whole nation. He said, come, let us reason together. Do your sins. He didn't say do our sins. He felt there was no problem with him. He said, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be made white as snow. He said, though they be red like crimson, they'll be as white as wool. He said, if you are willing, he, he wasn't thinking that he was at any fault. He wasn't thinking there was any problem with him. Until the year that King Uzziah died. And he saw that the train of the Lord filled the temple. And he saw the seraphim, the angels of God, they flew in. And he saw how they covered their feet and they cried, holy 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 unto the lord god of hosts all of a sudden as he heard holiness being proclaimed from heaven all of a sudden as he saw the beautiful angels of god that never tasted sin that never went into anything contrary to the will of god as he saw these angels of god that were serving god wholeheartedly from their heart from their soul from their mind wholeheartedly from morning to living all through the days he began to see that there was something wrong within him. And he said, I'm undone. Because I'm a wretched man, I'm a man of unclean leaves, and I dwell among people of unclean leaves. Because my eyes have seen the glory, the glory of the King of Kings. And then the angel, the moment he realized that that was the problem, and now realizes it's not just come and let us reason together, do your sins. The moment he realized that he too had this problem, he had his unclean mouth, his unclean, uh, his unclean thoughts and everything, and he had the Adamic nature within, and he had something that God still had to work upon, and he called upon the Lord. The angel flew, and he took fire from the altar of God. My friend, all from the altar of people, the fire from the altar of people cannot solve this problem we are talking about. The fire from the altar of religion cannot solve this problem we are talking about. It will take fire from the altar of heaven. It will take the hand of the angel coming upon you and touching your lips and touching your heart and touching your mind and making you to realize that things have been so cold and there are impediments on your way and the thing that is blocking the channel of prayer, the channel of the power of God, the channel of the presence of God, that the Almighty God will remove it and take it away from your life completely. The thing that is hindering fellowship with God and fellowship in the family and fellowship in the church, when the Lord will take it away, the cold touched his mouth and said, your sin is purged. Who knew before that Isaiah had something within him, the principle of sin, the root of sin, the carnality within, the depravity within that God still needed to remove. He was very busy. He was very active. He was talking about drawing water out of the well of salvation. He was talking about the joy of the Lord. He was talking about uh, repentance to other people. He was saying, come, come, come and let us reason together. He was talking to other people who knew that he had a blockage within him. Who knew that he had an impediment within him? You might have an impediment in your life. You might have something that is blocking your channel. Number one, it may be unbelief that is blocking your way. You are hearing the word of God, but you do not believe that God means what he says. And he says what he means. That without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. You think you can patch up. You think you will try. You think even if you are not as holy as you ought to be, you think if your heart is not pure, you think that if the Adamic nature is not taken away, you think if you are not sanctified, you think even though you are getting angry once in a while with your wife, you think even though you are arguing with your wife and nagging your husband and you are pulling one another's clothes, you think you can still make heaven. You don't believe God. You don't believe God that God is of purer eyes than to behold iniquity. You think with all the evil thoughts there, when you die, you can still manage to get to heaven. 
you think that well if you will be very active if you'll evangelize if you'll do other things even if you don't go on your knees to pray and seek the face of the lord you think god may still be able to lower the standard and get you to heaven you think will be lost in your flesh will be lost in your life you think with your covetousness you think with your looking at other women and as you're looking at the women you have lost in your heart you think it doesn't matter you don't believe the words of jesus christ that if you look on a woman to lust after her you have committed adultery already in your heart and accept your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and pharisees ye shall in no wise in no case by any means Get into the kingdom of heaven. You don't believe the word of God that be ye perfect as your father which is in heaven is perfect. You do not believe that he will grant unto us that we might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. You don't believe that whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Any sin, any time. Because the seed of God remains and abides in him. He cannot sin. He cannot sin. He cannot sin because he's born of God. Your problem is unbelief. And you see, that's the impediment. You do not believe that God means what he says. And he says what he means. You do not believe that lying will get you to hell. You do not believe that a little lie, a white lie, a lie to cover up, a pretense, an hypocrisy. You do not believe that that will constitute any something but between you and God. You do not think that unclean thoughts are anything at all. You have unclean thoughts inside your heart. You buy that newspaper with the picture of a woman that is almost naked. Or you look at the magazine with naked women. And you look at all those impurities. All the music of the world. All the records of the world you are bringing back again. And when you are going on the side of the road, you listen to all that music. You cherish them now. You agree with them now. You love them now. Inside your heart, you agree with them now. And it is maybe when you want to get married and you're having the uh, a ceremony. Or maybe when you have a child and you're having a ceremony. Or when you are dedicating a house, you're having a ceremony. Then you see all the music you begin to enjoy. Or did we give you in our church here? Did our choir sing for you here? The music you can dance to. All those music now that you have in your house from the CAC church. From the traditional people and from the people that will mention the name of Jesus there and then they will be dancing on the side of the road and you bring that to your house now is that what we gave you is that what Jesus put in your hand all these records you are now playing when you are having naming ceremony all the sentimentals you are now playing when you are having your ceremony is it not the same thing they are doing in the world all the secret television and all the film show you have inside your house all the pornography all the card playing all the betting you are now betting you are now gambling all those things is it not sin is this not why god has hidden his face that he will not hear i have about this some clean thoughts i about the filthy language the filthy speech people who say they are children of god now you are calling your child by abusive name you cannot call your child by the normal name anymore you call your child a dog look at his mouth like the mouth of his father are you abusing your husband don't you know this is impediment in your way we get angry we fight we hold malice who went to report me to coordinator who went to report me to the pastor we are angry you cannot get to heaven this way heavenly standard is the very high standard is the highway of holiness and the lion shall not pass therein it is only for the redeemed of the lord for the redeemed of the lord shall come with joy and singing in their mouth but all this unclean thought all this filthy language don't we jest now are we not clowns now don't we bring the jokes of the world and bring it into our family and bring it into the church don't we call one another you foolish man you foolish woman you foolish wife i thought that you were a christian when i married you but i didn't know you were as foolish as this don't we say and hey, you bad husband to you i didn't know this is the way you are when you were carrying bible and i was going to marry you can we go to heaven with this abusive language can we be revived with all these evil things that have come back into our lives the dirty habits dirty habits among the young people dirty habits among the older people dirty habits among the people that are not married and among the people that are married they cursing in your mouth the ingratitude ingratitude never never grateful never never grateful for what the lord has done for them when i say what the lord has done for them i'm talking about salvation i'm not talking about healing and about other things 
we should be grateful for that. But I'm talking about salvation. Now salvation is more than money. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world? And um, if he shall lose his own soul, or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Salvation is very, very important. And if God has used a pastor, if God has used the preacher of the word of God, and he has brought you into the salvation experience, and you are in the kingdom of God, you should be forever grateful. Every time you wake up, you should remember, why it not for a church like this? Why it not for a pastor like this? I will never know what they call holiness. I will never know what they call salvation. I will never know what they call clean life. I will never know what they call real proper interpretation to the word of God. But are you grateful? A little rebuke, you are angry. A little rebuke, you swell up. A little rebuke, we cannot see your face again. You cannot get to heaven this way, my friend. Getting to heaven is higher than, you know, it's not, child, it's not a child's play. Getting to heaven is something that is very, very serious. There are people that are indifferent. There are people that after we have, you know, uh, they see that I'm stressing the word of God like this. They're indifferent. They don't care. Ah, they say, well, if, if that is what they are talking about again today, and they're not talking about healing, they will pick up their Bible. Once I announce uh, the subject, and I say, well, today I'm talking on the condition for revival. Ah, so it's revival today again. It's holiness again today again. So they'll pick up their Bible and go behind the, the auditorium and say, well, bye-bye. When they are talking about miracle and healing, I will come back. They are indifferent to the condition of their soul. They are indifferent to the call of the Almighty God. They are indifferent to the voice of the Almighty God. They are indifferent to the things that ought to arrest their attention. And it is a thing that is blocking the way of the Lord in their life. They have disregard for the word of God. Disregard for the voice of God. How about the backbiting? How about the bitterness? How about the envy? How about the jealousy? How about the deceitfulness? How about the selfishness? How about the hypocrisy? You see all these things that you do, whether in your deed, outwardly, or in your disposition, inwardly, that are contrary to the holiness of God, they are blockages. What do we do? There must be complete repentance. There must be complete turning away from everything that is evil. Look at it again. Isaiah chapter 59. I'm reading from verse 2. But your iniquities are separated between you and your God. Your iniquities are separated between you and your God. Your sins have hid a space from you that you will not hear. And uh, if you continue just fasting, the Lord does not hear. Look at the previous chapter. In Isaiah chapter 58, from verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Israel their sin. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways. As a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God, they ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the feast of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard. On high. You see, it is not just the fasting, and it is not just the praying. It is calling upon the name of the Lord and finding where we have gone astray, finding where we have left the path of righteousness, finding where we have made the Lord Almighty to close his eyes toward us, finding where we have not been doing the will of God finding where we have lost the softness in our heart. We have, we have lost the holiness, the whiteness of the soul. Where we have lost the glory of God from our soul, from our life. 
it is only then, only then, that the Lord will open up again. In Second Chronicles chapter 7. Second Chronicles chapter 7. From verse 13. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locals to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Do you know there are times God shuts up heaven and no rain comes down and no blessing comes down? Do you know there are times when God gives the angels he has been sending to earth, he gives them holiday. He said there is no assignment now. There is no assignment to bring blessing or take blessing to those people down there on earth. They are rebellious. They are disobedient. They are sinful. They are carnal. And they are not following after my way. And the Lord locks the gate of heaven and says no angel will go to earth. No angel will go and visit all those suffering people. Leave them alone. They are rebellious people. There are times God shuts heaven. That he doesn't allow the blessings to flow down. And he puts the key in his pocket. And the people may knock. But knocking will not bring the answer. That's another solution. And the people will call and cry. Calling and crying will not bring an answer. There is another solution. Do you know there are times when locusts are eating all the crops of the earth and heaven is closed and they do not pour down insecticide that will destroy all the locusts, all the spiritual locusts that are devouring the land. Do you know that there are times when the windows of heaven, the gates of heaven are locked and the pestilence that is uh, killing people on the face of the earth, there is no medicine that will cure them. Do you know that there are times when healing does not come down? Do you know that there are times when God just shuts up heaven and his face concerning the people? What is the solution at such a time? Is it singing? Is it clapping? Is it fasting? Is it praying? Is it, uh, you know, coming and saying, well, let the pastor pray for us. Let the pastor pray for us. We need healing. We need this. We need that. No, that's not the solution. What's the solution? Verse 14. If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. I told you about Isaiah. What did Isaiah do? Isaiah humbled himself. If you remember about Nehemiah, you know what Nehemiah did? When he saw the gate of Jerusalem was burnt, and all the walls were broken down, and he knew that the place of the sepulchre of his father, they were being overrun by wild animals. He became so sorrowful before the king at Asaxis. And when the king saw him, he said, Nehemiah, you are sad. You have not been like this before. You are downcast. What's the problem with you? And the Bible says the queen was sitting by king at Asaxis at that time. And he said, why will I not be sad? How can I ever be happy? The place of God's choice. The place where God put his blessing before. The place where God put his glory before. Jerusalem, the land of my fathers, is broken down. And the walls are broken down. And the gates are burnt with fire. And all the rubbish, everything is there. And the king said, what do you want? And when he said, what do you want? He said, I prayed unto my God. And I said, if you will help me, if you will give me permission. There's only one thing that is in my heart now. I will go to repair the walls, the broken walls of Jerusalem. I will raise up the gate again. And all the rubbish and all the debris that have come into the chosen city, I will clear everything away again. That the reproach against the people of God will be taken away. And he said, you have your request. And he went in there. When he went in there, he saw all the rubbish, he saw all the broken walls, he saw all the broken gates. He wept and he cried. And he confessed his own sin. He confessed his own sin, and he confessed the sin of the people. And as he prayed, the Lord answered them, If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. The same thing with um, Daniel, when they had been 70 years in the land of captivity. And it appears that they were almost being forgotten in the land of captivity. And the people were crying. And they were saying that they couldn't see the face of the Lord when they were in captivity. But none of them actually came to the Lord in 
real repentance because uh, you know what they were crying about is that by the rivers of Babylon there we sat down yea we wept when we remembered Zion we hang our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song and they that wasted us required us a mark saying Sing unto us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget a cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Resage, resage, burn it down, even to the foundation thereof, O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth that little ones against the stones. Daniel realized that he needed to call upon the Lord. He knew that if they were just singing and clapping, that, that was not the solution. And he saw the face of the Lord. He wanted revival. My brothers and sisters, this is the condition. You know, a church like this where God has put his name, a church like this, we, we hear these testimonies, and uh, all the time the Lord has been glorifying himself. A church like this, when sometimes angels will go to people in their dream and mention deeper life to them and say, go to deeper life, your salvation is there. In our church here, many times we have found that little children uh, boys and girls who have been kidnapped by people that have real terrible juju medicine. They'll be taken away to the oracle. When they get to the oracle, they see the mark of deeper life on them. And the oracle will say, no, we cannot touch this one. It's a child of the king. And they will drive him out. And the child will be on the side of the road, maybe in Ogo State or somewhere. The child does not know. A person will come, an invisible person he will come. He say, child, what's your name? Where do you live? And he'll take him into the vehicle and he'll bring him near his house in Lagos here. And the moment he points and says, That's your house, the person will vanish. That's the church where we are. A church where God Himself, before we call Him, He answers. He opens blind eyes. He makes people that are almost dying in the hospital. Once we pray on an anchorship, we send it to the hospital, the person will get up. If they say the person will not, has not had a child for 29 years, for 23 years, once we say in the name of Jesus, it looks like God has given deeper life just the name of Jesus alone. We call that name. When other people call that name, they don't receive any answer from heaven. When we call that name, it doesn't take five minutes. God rescues them. A church like that is not honoring God again. A church like that is not following after holiness again. A church like that is forgetting the old standard. But the Lord is saying there is still a remedy. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be opened. And my ears attained unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now, I have chosen and sanctified this house. I have chosen and sanctified this house. Look at where you are sitting. Look at where you are. This place was a dumping ground before. It was a matchy place. It was a rejected place. And God chose the place. And blind eyes opened there. And even dead people, they are raised there. Many, many things happen. He said, this is the place I've chosen, but the walls are broken down now. And the gates are destroyed. And the rubbish is coming in. 
And people with their lying, with their jealousy, with their anger, with their fighting. Can you imagine a church like this? Where brother cannot live with brother amicably. Where sister cannot live with sister amicably. Why we cannot love one another openly with a transparent heart. Can you imagine a church where God has put his name, where God has put his presence, where God has put his power, jewelry is coming back, cosmetics are coming back. Can you imagine a church like this? Husbands are even divorcing their wives now. I cannot live with you. I will live alone. I will not marry another person. I know that's the Bible, but the quarrel between us will never settle. Wife will pack away from the husband. We just begin to hear information. Can you imagine a church like That's what happened to Jerusalem. And God told Nebuchadnezzar, I said, Nebuchadnezzar, you can go after the Jerusalem people now. I've removed my hand from them. I've removed my face from them. You want to take them to captivity? They're in your hand now. You people, what do you want to make this church? We need revival. We need the power of God in a Psalm 139. Psalm 139, I'm reading to you from verse 23. Psalm 139, verse 23, search me, O God. And know my heart, try me, and know my thoughts. You may think there is nothing to be corrected in your life. You may think you are all right, but you may be the Achan in the church. You may be the one that is doing something sickly that does not allow the favor of God to be upon us at present. And uh, you know, we cannot pray on healing now. I don't have the interest at present. We cannot pray on miracles. I don't have the interest at present. I'm jealous of the glory of my God. The name of my God is put in the mud. The name of my God is put into the mud and I cannot talk about healing. All I can talk about now is be holy and come back to the Lord. When you come back, when you come back, maybe the Lord will comfort me and the Lord will wipe away my tears and the Lord will allow me to talk to you about healing again. But as for now, the only thing I can talk about and if you like to come, if you say, well, if you are a healing Christian, if you are bread and butter Christian, now that, you know, the pastor says, at present his mind is just on revival, his mind is on holiness. If you are a bread and butter Christian and you stay in your house, well, you go to the hand of the devil. You go to, and when the revival comes, when the power of God comes, when the rain begins to descend, you will not be here. You'll be outside there. But at this time, when the church is sorrowful, at this time, when the church is sad, at this time, when the church is begging God and saying, Oh God, are you going to leave this church like this? Are we going to dry up? Are we going to be left in the hand of the devil? Why don't you agree with the church and let us make this church clean? Let us make this church pure. Search me, oh God. Search me, oh God. And know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I want you to rise up and tell the Lord, Search me, O God. Search me, O God. Search me, O God. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me and know my thoughts, I pray. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Are you concerned? Is your heart broken? Are you telling the Lord, search me, O God? Search me, O God. Search me, O God. And know my heart today. Try me, O Lord. I know my thoughts, I pray. Search me. Search me. Search me. Know my heart. Know my life. Know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me. Are you the Achan in the church? Are you the one that is sinning secretly in the church? 
Are you the backslider that refuses to repent? Are you the rebellious, hardened sinner that refuses the call of God? Search me, O God. Search me, O God. Search me, O God. And know my heart today. Try me, O Lord. And know my thoughts, I pray. Are you holy? Are you righteous? Are you committed to the Lord? Search me, O God. I know my heart today. Try me, O Lord. And know my thoughts, I pray.